Hello, my friends. Welcome to today's podcast. Welcome to this episode. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope your August has been going really well. I looked at the date and was like, oh my word, halfway, (laughs) just about through August. If you are listening to this, when this episode comes out. So I hope you're having a wonderful time, whether your kids are going back to school now, or you're starting to start school now, if you homeschool, or if you've still got some more weeks of summer, these are my favorite weeks like this. August and September are just have become like my favorite months. It used to be more June, July. because I was so excited for summer and all of that. I know it depends where you're at in the world, but I love that late summer feeling and yeah, that early September too, where it's still so nice out. Typically I feel like we forget about, I often forget about, I'm like, Oh, September's fall. It's really usually not otherwise that it's still really nice for a long time. So I hope you're enjoying it, getting some vitamin D and all that good stuff. Today, we are going to talk about systems and how it's so much more important to have systems than to be motivated. And that is just the cold, hard truth. (laughs) Like we like motivation is such a hype thing. Like I just have to be motivated. Oh, I got to motivate myself. And yes, and there's still ways that we can. And I have episodes for you on that. If you scroll back on ways to, you know, motivate yourself in the moment, but more than that, deeper than that, we need systems because you can only, what are you going to hype yourself up every single day? (laughs) Like, yes, I'm going to go wash the silverware again. That's what I'm always talking about because we don't have a dishwasher. Like, no, I'm not going to motivate myself every day. I'm just going to wash the silverware after mealtimes. Right. Uh, before I do, I just want to tell you, I'm so sorry if you've listened to a million of these August podcast episodes and you've heard it so much, just skip forward a little bit. But if you haven't, I want to tell you, So you have a chance to win a $25 Amazon gift card that I'm doing a podcast review giveaway for the month of August. So all you have to do is literally review the podcast and I need to know that you did it. So here's the steps to enter. Number one, wherever you listen to this podcast, give it a star rating and if possible, a written review. Number two, screenshot it. Number three, send me your screenshot, Brittany at healthycatholicmoms.com. Then you are entered. And I, at the end of August, I'm going to give it right up till August 31st. I will draw a winner using an online random generator name generator that I use for my challenges and whatnot. And I will announce the winner on the podcast a couple episodes into September. I will also email the winner, all that good stuff. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I'm so sorry if you're hearing this all the time, tell a friend too, they can, <laughs> maybe you don't want them to, cause maybe you want another chance to win, but all right. So motivation, like I mentioned, is very fleeting, right? It's a feeling it's an, it's emotionally driven. I wouldn't say it's an emotion, but it's definitely emotionally driven, right? Like I feel good today. I'm excited. I'm, this happens a lot for a lot of my clients. I hear about when they've been seeing some progress, like it's hard to get yourself. If you're starting from ground zero and you don't feel strong and you don't feel like you have endurance and you don't feel lean or any of those things. And everything's really hard to you when you start it's very difficult to get yourself to be excited to do your next workout and to push forward and things like that. It's usually when we get a little bit of positive feedback, when we feel our genes be a little bit looser, when we feel a little more energetic, when we feel a little stronger, when we pick up those weights, then it's like, Oh, I'm motivated because I'm motivated by the results. I'm motivated by the progress. That can't always happen. And that's not always how life is like back to the cleaning my floors thing <laughs> or just, you know, anything housework. I said silver before, but like, yeah, I got to clean my kitchen floors. I'm not going to be motivated by like, yes, maybe that I'm motivated for the result of having a sparkling floor that smells good and whatever. But I also know the reality of that. I have three children and it's going to be a mess in a matter of the next 20 minutes or so. Right. If I'm doing it at nap time, like or quiet time right after that, it's getting applesauce on it again, all that stuff. So we just can't rely on motivation. And like I said, it's, it's great. Sometimes, you know, I mentioned it as a tip on my running episode too. And we talked about running, like music is highly motivating. Music can also be highly motivating in the home, like for your, not just your workouts, but I like to put on specific music when I clean and specific music, when I'm going to work, sit down and create exercise programs, things like that. Like there's different tools we can use, but beyond that, we really do need systems. And I saw this big time when COVID hit and people who were going to the gym or going to classes and things like that, like who, who knew what they were motivated by that was taken away temporarily. Right. And for a long time, for a lot of us. So 
like, okay, I know I'm motivated by a passionate instructor and I know I'm motivated by everyone sweating in the room together. And I know I'm motivated by music. Well, when all that's away, like, are you still going to work out when the chips are down? Like what happens? Can you force yourself to get it done? You know, that's when you need to be flexible and pivot and find a new way to be motivated, quote unquote. But beyond that, you need a system like your system before was going to the gym, taking group classes that was gone. So what's your new system, right? I am such a believer in systems, not just routines, but like a whole little system that works together for, I would suggest how you work out, how you meal plan, how you clean your home, morning systems or night systems. I guess you could say to throw in the word routine there. If you feel more comfortable with it, your morning routine or your night routine. I'm not talking about like morning routine. I wake up and I wash my face and I do my jade roller and I put on my under eye patches. I don't do any of these things. I'm just saying <laughs> I should. Um, but no, like then I meditate and then I do my cold plunge and then I did it. I'm not talking about that kind of morning routine. I'm talking about like what you need to do to get yourself and your kids out the door. If that's you and you leave or what you need to do to set yourself and your kids up for a good homeschool day or whatever that looks like for you. Same thing with night routine. Um, night routine so big. It, it affects obviously how your morning starts. Like do you make sure all the dishes are done before you go to bed? Do you make sure the house is reasonably picked up before you go to bed? And I'm not just talking about you. Mom doesn't have to do it all. I'm saying like everyone in your household, are there routines and systems that people know? That's the really good and nice thing about a system or routine is other people should know about it so that they can do it when you're not there. Like there was a funny meme that went around a bit ago, quite a bit ago. <laughs> it was like a little vulgar, so I didn't share it, but it was uh, I'll, I'll do it without the expletive. It's like walking around my house in the morning, like who the heck closed last night. And I laughed so hard because my first job ever besides babysitting and nannying was at Tim Hortons. And you know, you have your nightly cleaning checklist. You have your morning cleaning checklist. You have the baking checklist and all these things. And, and that works for businesses. So many different businesses, restaurants, things like that. Everyone needs to be on the same page. Like there's an opening and there's a closing and there's something to give things a sense of order. So if you've been feeling stressed out and like things are just chaos, you know, like I'm doing a lot of things. I'm spinning a lot of plates. I I'm always feel busy, but it's not like something's not happening. Look at having like a repeatable system that then also you can pass on to others. Now I'm going to go through three little tips that I think would help get you started in this area. I've said before, I'm obviously not a systems or routines or cleaning hack, whatever, like guru. That is not my line of work here. However, I'm, I can tell you how to lose fat <laughs> and I do. And I tell you how to take care of your bodies and all that good stuff, but, and hopefully your overall health and yada, yada, but you can find other resources for that books, podcasts, whatever, find what works for you and who motivates you and speaks to you. The biggest thing for me in the past, just couple years, like I think, um, my oldest is six. So that first like year or two of having just a baby, and then a little toddler. And then I, we had our second son when he was two and a half. And those like first three to four years was more about me figuring out what the heck I was doing in general. Like what days do I clean? How do I do things? Like I didn't have a place for most things. <laughs> it was just all willy nilly of like, yeah, I stick batteries in that drawer, but sometimes they're in the other drawer and sometimes they're upstairs. And sometimes they're in the basement on the workbench. Like it just a lot of Figuring out those areas, I think personally, and then the past couple years, like, I don't know for, so then when he was four to now like six, it's been more about having systems that I can express to other people and that other people can have going when I'm not home. So that was big when I was training outside of the home and doing group classes outside of the home and then also doing things here for at the time as more fit mom life to the fullest was my brand before healthy Catholic moms, but all that stuff. And it was like, if I was out of the picture here, the other things didn't get done. And that was not my husband's fault. It was not like, Oh, mom's gone. And the dishes don't get done. It was like things would be maybe done, but not, there was no like cohesion to it or not thoroughly or whatever. Like okay, dinner was served, but the kitchen floor wasn't swept. Like the laundry was left in the dryer because I didn't tell anyone it was there. Like there was just a lot more chaos because I didn't communicate things. I didn't like share my routines with anyone, that kind of thing. 
So truly this last year, my husband and I were talking about it the other day, like things have just seemed to run so much more smoothly. And it's not like we've been able to delegate a ton of things. Our oldest is only six. So he has a couple chores. The three-year-old has a couple chores. You know, it's mostly them taking care of their own stuff. And then like setting up the table, like setting the table for dinner, clearing the table, folding laundry, they fold towels, like that kind of stuff. But obviously the bulk of it is up to us. Not like a lot of things have not changed is my point. And just being able to have like kind of that checklist that everybody knows then, like if we're not, and you don't have to, if this makes you really rise, we never actually had, this is a tip <laughs> I'm going to share but we didn't actually do this. So I'll, I'll get through the, the tips. I think now it'll make more sense. Number one, if you're just thinking overall, like, okay, how am I going to actually implement any systems? You just mentioned working out, meal planning, cleaning your home. First of all, I am going to walk through some of these ideas throughout the rest of the month, but I would number one, start with your biggest pain point. Like if everyone is a mad dash out the door in the mornings and it's not peaceful and it's the opposite of what you want, people forget things, chores aren't done, whatever start with having a morning system. Like this is what we do in the mornings. Um, or if cleaning is just a disaster and you don't know when you're cleaning things or what, like start with having a cleaning system. I would not try to overhaul everything at once. It's probably gonna make yourself and everyone else crazy, but I would start with what is stressing you out the most right now. And then number two, tip two is to talk to your spouse about it. Talk with your spouse about it. What do you think? Like, what's your take on this? What not? That was, like I said, the piece that we put together in the last two years. And then step three is to keep it visual until everyone has it down. So this is what I mentioned. We really did not do. I did not ever print out a checklist that said evening routine, like number one, do the dishes. Number two, sweep the floor. Number three, everyone brush teeth, like all of that. But I think it was just all more verbal and kind of passed on more. Like my husband just noticed what I was doing and realized kind of what we do in our evening routine. Honestly, that was just another good pat on the back to him to like be observant and figure out like what it was I was doing. It's just kind of like mom makes the magic happen, but never told anyone how to do it when she's gone. And now like whoever's basically quote unquote, closing down the home and stuff knows how to do that, but we will need to use checklists and, or some kind of visual tool. It doesn't have to be a checklist, whatever works for your family, but when other kids are doing it, you know, and I'm sure some of you are listening to this with older kids thinking like, yeah, I remember teaching my kids had to do the dishes. And it was like, they just did the dishes and that was it. You've got to put on there, like wipe down the counters, run the dishwasher. If it's full, if you have a dishwasher, like make sure you do the pans Don't let them soak for seven days. <laughs> like all of that stuff will sweep the floor and then the kitchen's done and closed. Whatever the task is until it's, you know, been ironed out. And that, so that's, it is funny. It's, this is how life works, right? I know like you guys are right there with me that as soon as we got things flowing on our end, we're going to be bringing more people into it. And we are going to need to then teach them the way and teach them the system and stuff. But I think it's just such a help to not like, it is a complete 180. What I walk into now, if I leave, I typically leave one night a week or one Saturday morning or something a week to go bulk plan, like make some podcast outlines, catch up on emails for the Chasey Greenish group, whatever. And when I walk back in and the essential oil diffusers going and things are swept and laundry's done, like we know the laundry days, we, everyone knows Thursday sheet day. Like, again, I didn't really have to write that anywhere. It was just like, okay, we stripped the beds on. It used to be Fridays. If you're an old listener of the podcast, I'm sure I mentioned it, but we adapted because we realized our Fridays are actually busy. We usually have some kind of play date or St. class or whatever. So we switched it up to Thursdays, but you know, that kind of thing. And it's just better all the way around. So if first you, you are lacking systems, you can't expect people to be mind readers. Cause you don't even really have a system. That was me the first couple of years. Then once you kind of have your system and it's working well, make sure other people know it and can replicate it. So use visuals, start with what's really, you know, bothering you and work through it as a family, or at least as a couple, if, you know, your kids aren't old enough to pitch in too much yet. So this is huge because the, I get this all the time. Like, how are you motivated to work out? How are you motivated to make dinner every night? I'm not, <laughs> I just planned ahead, right? I plan my workouts and I do them. I literally look at the week and know I have to get three strength trainings in bare minimum. I am pregnant right now. And I, that is the, that is where I set the bar for pregnancy is three to four strength workouts 
multiple walks in there. I would walk every day if I could, but that just doesn't fit my schedule and my husband's work schedule and all that stuff. So, you know, whatever, but I know I'm getting three strength in. It's not going to be, do I want to do strength today? Do I feel good today? It's no, I, I do. I do three strength a week. So I'm doing that. Like that's a system. Um, and it's four to five when I'm not pregnant, ideally, ideally. <laughs> All right. So I hope this is helpful. Somebody I have help, um, used as a resource in the past is Chelsea. Joe has a podcast called systemize your life. And she goes through some really good systems for the home and you just have to find what works for you. There's some things like I've heard on hers that then I've been able to tweak and change, um, to make it fit our family and our life. And I think that's what it's about. So thank you so much for listening today. And I hope that this was helpful to you. Uh, next episode, we're going to talk about food pairings to help you avoid energy crashes and mood swings. So stepping away a little bit from systems and motivation and really tangible, really tactical, eat this paired with this. Don't just do this. And it's going to give you all day energy and help you fight those sharp spikes and declines. All right. So stay tuned for that. And until then, have a great rest of your day.